What's going on YouTube? We're back here at the garage. We're gonna be working on the car a little bit and see what we can get done. I've been trying to think right now what I'm gonna be doing for the car today since we pretty much got all the major stuff done for it. Engines in, wiring is 90% done for engine harness is already completely done. Um, body harness, like the chassis and the headlights is all done as well. Uh, right now I'm gonna wire in my fuel pump. So if you look over here, we've got our fuel pump we just put in. I'm running a Walbro 450 in tank with a dash 6AN all the way up to the uh, firewall to a filter with the sock inside of the tank as well with a filter at the firewall and then that goes to the fuel rail and I've got my positive and negative coming right off there and what we're gonna be doing is doing a 12 to 14 volt conversion which normally pumps out a, a larger volume of fuel which is especially uh, important for these race cars or whatever and it's a lot more consistent and more flow more power so essentially what most people do is run the power wire off of here which is the stock fuel pump um, connector. It comes from the ECU and from the main relay and everything that's activated. And they run the signal wire off of here, if I'm not mistaken, and then to the relay itself. And then the relay is powered by the battery, like most relays. And um, then it powers the pump. So basically the fuel pump power, the original one is, it turns into just the signal. So I'm not 100% uh, sure on the wiring schematics, but we're gonna look them up online right now to verify. And we're gonna run to the parts store real quick and find the exact relay that we need, as well as the wiring to go with the right voltage and amperage and all that good stuff. Pulling it up to advanced. Littering's bad. Throw it away in the garbage can. Other stuff. Back to the shop. Oh snap, someone's car is getting searched. Okay, so we got a few stuff from Advance. Total came out to about 30 bucks. Hose clamps, but that's unrelated. To start off, we've got this heavy duty horn relay, which is a 30 amp. It says 12 volt, but from what I heard, uh, people hook them up and they put, they put out 14 volt. Then the terminal install kit. Just in case you don't already have something like that. And I also got a 30 amp inline fuse that we can put in uh, from the battery to the actual relay. And 14 gauge wiring. Before we dive into the actual installation, I want to just explain briefly how the relay is actually going to work with this. Because if you have a good understanding of how it's going to work, it's going to be a lot easier to install as well as, you know, understand it. Essentially, what this relay is going to do is going to mimic a light switch. Now the signal for the light switch is gonna be coming from the fuel pump right here, the OEM connector, which there's a positive and a ground right there. That's gonna send the signal to this light switch relay, whatever. Uh, I forget which exact pin, pin it is, but let's say that this is the pin that receives the 12 volt from the stock fuel pump. Now, as soon as this gets signal, something inside is gonna bridge a connection or do like a little switch and it's gonna allow, let's say, this one from the battery that has constant power, open or close the switch so power can go to this one right here, and then that goes to the fuel pump, and then we have a ground. Um, those aren't the exact pins, I'm just saying it off the top of my head right now, but that's just kind of basically what it does. You have a signal to the relay, which activates the switch to uh, close, and let's power go through it and then ground. Pretty simple. So right now I'm just gonna see where I can mount up the relay. I'm thinking of putting it like somewhere right here just so it can hang or uh, it doesn't really have to be anywhere. I don't really wanna leave it right here just in case if the terminals touch, I don't want it to be grounding out. So I'll probably hang it up somewhere around here. Uh, of course I'm gonna be using heat shrink and everything so it shouldn't be as much of a problem. But now that I have that in mind, I'm going to start seeing exactly how I want to wire this up. All right, so we're gonna start by putting these little, I think they're called spade connectors. They basically go one into each other like that. We're gonna start by 
putting these onto the ends of the um, the fuel pump itself. Connect these right here. The reason that I'm connecting them to connectors first is that we don't want to have the the pump hard wired into the uh, the relay and the rest of the electrical system because God forbid something ever happens to the pump or we decide to upgrade or something, we're going to be able to remove the pump easily. Now I don't have actual crimpers, so if you have access to them, perfect. Me, I'm just using the ghetto plier crush method, which isn't the best, but as long as you get it nice and tight, it normally should be okay. I'm going to slip these heat shrink over it. Or the smart thing would have been just put the heat shrink on first and then just pull it over a little bit rather than pulling it over everything. Instead of me fishing it out how I am now. All right. There we go, still nice strong connection. Shrink this on. Now if you're doing this with uh, gas in your pump or in your tank, make sure you're careful and there's no fumes or actual gas anywhere. My tank is completely drained, dried and ready for E85. So I'm not worrying about that personally. But if you have gas close to you, don't be doing this like this. Okay. Next one, same thing, put a little heat shrink. This time we're doing it on the bottom. Just put that on. And... Little connector on it. good so I've got the negative right here positive right here negative we're gonna run both wires we're gonna run out of here at the top negative is going to go back to this 10 millimeter that we have on the chassis itself I'll ground it up I'll grind it away and make it a nice clean ground and right now using the wiring that we got we're gonna um, connect one of these over here, which is the other end of what we just put on here, which it just slips right over and put that to ground right there. Got the second half of the ground cable made up, one connector for right here, and then this connector to um, a 10 millimeter bolt. I had to widen the, the top a little bit just by cutting it and opening it. That'll fit right there. Now I'm gonna clean up the chassis right there. This little grinder thing. You want that to be a nice clean ground so it can get perfect uh, negative to whatever you're powering. And that goes for anything with electricity. You always want to have a nice ground. Okay, so now I've got the power wire from the pump going to the front prong, which is 87. It's going to be the actual power that uh, goes to, you know, power the pump, obviously. Now, uh, we're going to be getting the signal right now, which this is the OEM connector. You've got two wires and for Hondas, I think they all come like this, but uh, especially on Integras, there's a green strip on a yellow wire and then a black and white wire. The green is going to be your positive and then the black is just ground. Then separately, there's the fuel sending unit in the back. Some cars have it integrated, so make sure you check your wiring diagram for whatever car you're doing. But you're gonna grab the power wire and use that for the rest of your, uh, the wiring that we're about to do. All right, so kind of like an overview, I've got the ground wire right here off of the fuel pump. Then I've got the power wire running to the relay. This is right here. Then on the back end of that is the switch, which is the light switch that I mentioned earlier. These two right here because this wire, if you lead down, I have it running to where I'm gonna be running my battery and then a little inline fuse as well, 30 amp fuse. 
Looking at the other pins, I have the signal wire on the left. Just look back into the diagram. This is the 12 volt, 12 volt signal that we were mentioning earlier that comes stock on the cars. And the last pin over here is the chassis ground and we went ahead and uh, sand it a little bit on the chassis itself. That way we get a good ground signal. But that's pretty much it. And that's how to make your 12 volt inconsistent stock uh, fuel pump into a consistent 14 volt fuel pump with a standalone relay. Then I forgot to mention on these hot wires well, with constant voltage, we're gonna be connecting it with these quick connects, but I'm also gonna be putting a little bit of heat shrink over the top of them. That way, if something happens with the relay or with the uh, pump, we can disconnect them easily without having to resolder and we'll just be able to pull off the old heat shrink. So we're not gonna shrink it all the way. For example, right here, I just did the ends, but the connection is still nice and solid inside and removable. And we wanna go ahead and do that on all the connections that have power to them. This one is not as important because it is a ground connection and it's already fully grounded right here 100% of the time. And if this touches somewhere else, it won't be doing anything and no harm to the system. Thanks guys, if you have any questions, drop a comment down below, hit the like button, we really appreciate it and subscribe.